Hey, I'm Ollie from Techable, and today we're going to have a look at what's in my tech bag, as well as maybe a few top tech bag tips. Let's get into it. So I suppose with all tech bag reviews, you should probably start with the bag itself. And this isn't really a tech bag. This is just a bag. It's from, well, a good bag, but it's it's from Stubble & Co. Um, this is, I think it's called the Day Pack, and it's a 20 litre drawstring bag. Uh, no waterproofing, but um, it's a good size for me. Also, something you may or may not know about bags, but at the back here, you can see the two straps, um, <laughs> which is <laughs> something you may not know about backpacks is they have two straps. No, something you may not know about backpacks is, see up here, the distance of the uh, between the two straps, you can see here they're quite far apart as opposed to being quite close together. If you're like me and you have a broad back, try and get something with the straps quite far apart because that just means the weight will be better distributed over your back. If it's got a much closer distribution, that's probably for people with, with smaller backs where it's gonna be a lot more centralized. And, but for me, this is really great and it helps distribute the weight quite a lot. Um, in terms of why I've got a 20 liter bag, that's the kind of the good balance for me. It's a good point between keeping all my stuff in without putting in so much weight that it, it starts to hurt. I do have a history of back problems and it's something that you should look after because uh, you only get one back. Uh, let's start off kind of going inside it then. So first things first, this is my water bottle. Um, it's from 720 degrees. It's a one liter water bottle and it fits in the side of the day pack because these pockets are extra big, which is great. Um, Moving on inside the pockets, so I've got one pocket at the front here, and in that I kind of keep the things that I go to every day, so, uh, well, every day and often, so these are my keys. And these are the AirPods Pro, which I don't need to spend a huge amount of time talking about these. They're a really solid pair of active noise cancelling headphones, uh, Bluetooth obviously, and they go well with my Apple ecosystem. And so if you haven't got an Apple ecosystem, you might want to have something else, but for me, the AirPods Pro do a great job. Um, going inside the bag then, uh, and I suppose we've just done the AirPods Pro, so we will go straight on to the AirPods Max, which I have done a video about. You can check that out somewhere on the screen, I don't know where. But um, yeah, I mean, look, the AirPods Pro, great. One of the biggest issues with them though is the case. The carry case they come with is not amazing, doesn't offer a huge amount of protection. However, the AirPods Pro, uh, sorry, uh, the AirPods uh, Max, do have now a lot of cases um, from third-party providers. This one is from a company called Winu, I think, or Wewu, I should say. Um, and a lot of people kind of say when I show them this, they're like, you know, this is massive. Like, you know, you you take up a huge amount of room uh, in your backpack. But actually, the kind of trend from a lot of the the newer uh, over-the-ear headphones, such as the XM5s from Sony, the Studios from Microsoft, is this kind of flat pack design and. Yeah, these take up a lot of room, but actually the footprint isn't a huge amount bigger than, than any of those other ones. So um, it's, you know, not for everyone. Everyone might not want a pair of over the ear headphones in their bag, but if you do, um, this kind of footprint fits fine, at least in mine. Um, next up, I'll go to the power bank. So this is a big boy, uh, quite, quite wide, but it is kind of on the thin-ish side, I suppose, for something this big. Um, so this is just under 27,000 milliamps, uh, it's 26,800, and that is, well, if an iPhone's about 4,500, then that's about six-ish charges of an iPhone. Um, but the output from this is actually really good, um, and I'll, I'll kind of talk about this in a minute, but one of the reasons I have uh, this power bank is that it can also charge pretty much all the other devices in my uh, tech bag and because of the amount of ports that's on there like pretty much at the same time as well. Uh, speaking of the other stuff in my tech bag, so this is my daily driver, uh, my daily driving laptop that is, I'll move that over there so people can kind of see it, um, and this is the M1 MacBook Air. So if you've seen my Dell video, um, which uh, should again be somewhere on the screen. Um, I talked quite a lot about the M1 MacBook Air in that video, despite not it being a video about the M1 MacBook Air. Uh, and generally speaking, I mean, I love this device because I just genuinely think that it is kind of the no flaws laptop. Like it's not perfect, but it's not got anything where you can say, well, you know, I, I wish it had this, I wish it had that. So I, I really do love the M1 MacBook Air. The other benefit to the Air, and it's gonna be, I think, the case for the next generation or the, the 12th generation of Intel laptops at least, is the extremely low TDP of the Air and how it can kind of sip power. 
That does actually mean that if you were to turn this off and charge it purely off of the power bank, uh, it would charge very slowly, but it would charge. And I mean, I haven't done a test because uh, frankly, the use case hasn't come up, but I have definitely had this from dead uh, to about 10, 12% off of this over maybe about, I don't know, it was about an hour or so, um, which can be useful if you're in a really, really tight squeeze. Um, but okay, that is the laptop. I don't need to say anything more about the M1 Air. This is the iPad Pro um, 11 inch. And yeah, I mean, the iPad Pro uh, in terms of design hasn't really changed a huge amount. This is actually the pre M1 version. So I can't remember which generation that is, maybe third or fourth. Um, but this was uh, before they moved to M1 in the MacBook Pros. And I've got to be honest and say, um, for my use case, which is largely media consumption, I mean, an Air probably would have done fine, but I got such a good deal on this. Uh, but uh, I just like taking a tablet with me for, you know, I live in the UK, I, I don't know about overseas, but in the UK, we have a lot of very small trains, stuff like the London Underground uh, and, and, in, and national trains don't have a lot of room in the seats and stuff. So sometimes it's difficult to get out a, a, a laptop. And also just for media consumption, I don't like using it on, on tiny screens, on a phone screen, so I will use my iPad. Um, so the last thing in this bag is actually kind of personally what I think is probably what most of the people have come here for, but it's also kind of the most interesting thing in the bag. It's my tech bag inside a tech bag. Um, is tech bag exception. I bet you didn't see that coming. And yeah, this is from Ugreen. Uh, I'll put, by the way, I, I think I mentioned, I can't remember now, I'm gonna put everything that is, is here in the links below. Um, but this is a, a little case from Ugreen. No, not that little, but what's really interesting about this is just the, the dimensions of it. It fits really well at the bottom of the bag. So it's, although it looks really chonky, it's actually very space efficient because you can get a lot in here and it sits at the bottom. And the hard shell just means everything in here is protected. And there's nothing in here that's like super, super delicate, but there are a few things that I'm just glad that, that I can say it's properly protected. Um, so inside my tech bag, inside a tech bag, I have a few things. I have my cables. So as you can see, I'm a uh, Apple Watch guy. So that's my Apple Watch charger. Um, I also have cable, 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 um, <laughs> USB-C to USB-C, which is mainly for the MacBook Air charging, and USB-C to Lightning, which is largely for all of the stuff that requires lightning because Apple just won't change. Um, and to plug those into, I have this. Now, the power brick is pretty important part of kind of any tech bag. Uh, it is ultimately the thing that you're gonna need. So this is obviously a UK um, power brick. Uh, and as some people might notice, because of the three prongs, it does mean that we're a little bit more limited as to the form factor of our power bricks. And um, you kind of end up getting square chunky things like this as opposed to slightly thinner things you might get in Europe and the US. Um, but for what I could get, uh, this is from Anchor, 65 watt, and it has two USB-Cs, one of which is uh, has a higher power input for laptops and a USB-A. It basically means I can charge pretty much all of my devices from the wall using the cables and the adapter. Um, and it is also another reason that I'm a big fan of the MacBook Air, um, because having a, a only a 30 watt power drawer is, is the optimal amount for the MacBook Air. It means I can actually charge all of these devices pretty much optimally at the same time, which you know is a pretty great boon, especially if you're staying like in a hotel or something overnight and you need to like go from zero to 100 on everything and wake up the next morning and just go really handy to have. Uh, this I still carry around for some reason. I don't really know why. This is a small foldable uh, phone stand. I've used it like two or three times. Actually, the last time I did use it was when I was staying in a hotel. I used it basically as like my alarm clock beside the bed so I could see the, the phone when I woke up. Um, it's a little neat thing. I got it off Amazon, I think in a set of two. Um, you know, it's flat, it doesn't take up any room. So I, I carry it around with me uh, under all my cables. Uh, next up, there's this uh, portable uh, 500 gig SSD from Sony. So this is the T5. And basically this SSD um, is encrypted. So I've got a, a password protection on it. And in order to get into it, I need to enter that password. Um, I like to carry this with me as a backup. I've got a bunch of videos and stuff on here that, that I've saved. And as well as that, uh, I just generally find it useful to have. There's some kind of work stuff and bits and bobs on there that are quite handy, so I, I take that with me wherever I go. Um, this is like, <laughs> this is a relic of a bygone era. This is like my backup cable. So I don't actually have anything that's mini USB anymore, but 
someone usually does somewhere. So I still carry it just in case at any point uh, someone needs that. Also, like when I go to the office, which is, is not too often nowadays, but when I do go, there are things like wireless mouse in there and inevitably sometimes they die and you don't expect him, whatever. And just having one of these is still useful. Probably for the next few years, I'll carry that around and then, and then we'll see. Um, <laughs> we'll, we'll see. So this again is another kind of redundancy. This is just a simple pair of the old Apple um, ear pods, uh, wired ear pods, obviously. And these are kind of my backup just in case all my audio devices die and I need to go in a call in a busy place. Um, it's pretty much just the, uh oh, I really need to jump on this quick, better get those out. But pretty handy. Um, now, obviously, I'm an Apple user, so this is my dongle. Uh, everyone has one. This is by a company called Uni. Um, it's a good dongle. I mean, I think this has got in the USB-C here, I don't know if it's 100 watts of power delivery, but it certainly has enough to charge the MacBook Air if I need it. But it's also got two USB-As, one on each side, a HDMI port, no idea what the standard on that is, but enough to connect up to, to most monitors. I can definitely do a 4K monitor, probably at maybe 30, I don't know. Um, as well as a micro SD and a uh, full size SD. So, you know, useful dongle. It's also got the rubber coating, which does take up a little bit more room, but these things can get really hot. So personally, I prefer to have that. Uh, it's, it's a neat little dongle. Uh, got that off Amazon, I can't remember, for maybe 30 pounds, something like that. Um, only a couple more bits really in here. So I've got the spare USB-C to USB-C that I use um, pretty occasionally, but sometimes when I'm doing multiple things or I want to charge multiple things, it can come in handy just to have one of those. Uh, and lastly is my uh, splitter, which again, kind of with the disappearance of headphone jacks everywhere now, I don't use this so much anymore, but every now and then we'll be on the go, myself and my partner, and we'll want to watch a video. One of the AirPods are out of battery or this or that, or one reason or the other. So we end up cracking out this and this and her headphones and whatever, and, and we have a good time. So it's still something I carry with me, but probably not something needed for most people. Um, so that is the majority of the contents that I take with me day to day. Obviously, sometimes, you know, I said earlier, if I go traveling, I'll take other bits. Um, I don't also, as you can probably tell, I don't take a camera. Uh, some people will have a camera in their tech bag, especially kind of more arty farty people, but that's not really something that I do yet. Uh, we'll see how it goes. One thing that I did want to show is this, which is my other backpack. Um, now I don't, as I say, I didn't really want to make this about backpack recommendations. So, but I did just want to kind of show, so this uh, is kind of my daily driver, the um, the day pack from Stubble Co. This is another Stubble Co bag. I, I promise this is not sponsored by Stubble Co yet. But um, this is basically my uh, biking bag. So it's waterproof, uh, it's uh, slightly bigger, it's obviously a roll top and it can fit a little bit more in it, but also I have my bike lock in there. And I'm the kind of person, the reason I have kind of so much stuff in my day-to-day -day tech bag is because I forget to put things in my bag. So I need a separate bag, so when I go, I'm biking, I grab my biking bag because it's got my biking stuff in it. Um, simple, but you know, I, I'm, I'm like that, so. Um, okay, well look, that was just a quick one to show everyone what's in my tech bag and maybe a few little tech bag tips along the way. Um, please comment below if you kind of have any views on any of the stuff I got in here, if you think maybe there's a more optimal solution or perhaps uh, something I'm missing entirely that you think would be a great addition to the tech bag. Uh, also, please, uh, if you like this content, it'd be great if you could give us a like and subscribe. It, it really, really helps, especially at these formative stages. And um, I'm really sorry if I'm sweating like a pig here because it's a heat wave in the UK and I've got a, all these studio lights going on. So, oh, it was a bit of a struggle to get through, but thanks for bearing with me. I'm Ollie from Techable and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.